3D printing has been making leaps and bounds this last year with inroads into O&P clinics and fabricators throughout the U.S. With going digital being the latest push the entire field is being thrust into, even though right now much of the industry and the supporting financial structures are resistant or slow to this change itself. Many educational institutions in the field are still catching up and are often constrained by budgetary considerations or contractual obligations that dictate their choice of software that they teach. With education still being in demand and on this issue, and one of the most potent forces against misuse, O&P Digital Designer wants to bring you some hard truths about digital O&P products, in particular using the industry-touted MJF HP Machine 3D Printing for BK sockets. Many of you are already in digital workflows, and some are actively 3D printing check sockets, or other small devices, jigs, covers, and other componentry, and these are great first steps. Fewer people or outfits, though, are pushing into definitive devices, and fewer still want to tell you about the results or the testing. Why do you think that is? Well, as someone who has worked in 3D printing for 10 years, I wanted to share with you some of the hard truths on 3D printing and MJF, and why the unanimous endorsement of powder bed fusion has yet to materialize in O&P. You all know at this point about FDM 3D printing, desktop affordable printers that create extrusion-based shapes in various plastics. They're affordable and accessible, yet they have a vulnerability in the vertical axis where the print's grain can compromise structural integrity when subject to certain forces. This limits their use to non-load-bearing components, like covers or check sockets, ensuring that no catastrophic failures occur outside the office. As a result, MJF is a technology that wins over these weaknesses. It uses powder-based sintering, which creates isotropic geometry or geometry that doesn't have substantially weaker axis due to its grain. It's long-lasting, it's more resolute, and much stronger overall than FDM printing. So, what are some of the disadvantages? Well, most of you also know how costly it can be to get into an HP machine. Anywhere from around $250,000 to $450,000 for an HP machine, with three floor stations and high demands on environment control. There are small build volume machines coming out from Formlabs that are bringing this price point down by half, but regardless, you are looking at a substantial investment to get into and own or run your own HP machine. So what could you do about this pain point? People could be tempted to look out at the industry of 3D printing companies, agnostic companies who run HP machines full-time producing parts for all other industries currently leveraging 3D printing and prototyping. There's a lot of HP machines available online to place your orders for print right now. It's a tempting offer. Why buy and run your own machine when you can have someone else print for you? What practitioners fail to realize is that 3D printing vendors who are outside the OMP market do not understand OMP values and needs from their printed parts. And what can result is a 3D MJF print that looks and feels great, but has hidden vulnerabilities that are just waiting to fail while in use on a patient. And the one thing that many people, even the 3D vendors don't realize, is just how badly MJF prints can fail on a patient because they don't fail like carbon fiber or like polypro. They actually shatter and they explode. Take a listen to this snippet of an interview I recently did with Mike Nadata at NY Rehab, where we show the testing and talk about what actually happened when he and I both went to an agnostic 3D printer manufacturer to produce 3D printed sockets. The results of this will shock you. Again, I always, I used to give the example of a run flat tire, right? The idea is that you know the the run flats would get you to safety so you you could be walking you could be driving down the road and you you know you drive over a you know a 30 nails you're you know you don't fly into the wall you 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 pull over it gives you that time to to drive the extra five miles to safety yeah now we felt that a prosthesis even even carbon even whatever if there's a a failure of the device the guy got you know hit by a car the guy walked the wrong way ran the wrong way twisted it the wrong way even if it fails it shouldn't be a catastrophic failure yeah. it should support the person enough so they realize something is wrong i need to sit down and i need to have the service that was always the minimum that i was trying to achieve and when something would just you know shatter that wasn't a minimum that was just yeah was not good and, and shattering is definitely the word on this block when it comes to mjf printing based on our results can, you, can we talk a bit more about that because yeah when it was in december we decided to do a run and it was it was really eye-opening what what was happening with what these were supposed to be superior prints and everyone was recommending an mjf print and it turns out there's a lot of flaws to that 
Yeah, I mean that was shocking because at one point, again, it's 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 a it's a journey of personal growth. I found with this printing, and I was so invested in the FDM. Like I said, we spent years. I had engineers. We we partnered with um, with some very experienced MJF um, printing companies who worked directly with HP, and um, we made gorgeous devices. And they looked great. They they felt great, uh, but a, as a lark, uh, because we had right, we had heard something. Maybe one of our one of our wall thicknesses may have been off. And one of we did like we must have done like ten or fifteen of them, right? Mm -hmm. And we thought one of them may have had an issue. So as a lark, I just I didn't even think to try to test it, and I put it in the same vice I've been doing for years. And without with very little force, I not only was able to break. That which you know that that proximal wall that I did so many times, so many hundreds of times over the years, but besides that localized failure, the entire device just shattered, almost like the you know like a fault line, uh, like for for an earthquake. Yeah, it, it just spidered, and that was probably one of the most catastrophic. Something that I, I've seen on polypropylene sockets, that a polypropylene socket could shatter like that, um, and that was that was it. We pulled the plug on all of that. So that kind of just said to me, just because, you know, everyone says you get what you pay for, not necessarily so. I mean, this is a case that is just, you know, and I had spoken to people at HP directly and I had spoken to their testing and it was not anything that, that made me sleep better at night. They, they claim that they've, um, they've compared it to carbon sockets. And again, everyone's carbon socket could be laid up differently and there's different reinforcements and there's different stress testing. It just wasn't. I wasn't satisfied that even though they were telling me that the stresses I was putting on were not real stresses, nobody would put so much stress on a socket like that. So what we saw there is the hard truth about PA12 MJF 3D prints. MJF parts are incredibly strong, but if there's any vulnerability or if there's any mishap on the process of printing it, the failure of such a part is much more unsafe than other standard materials. And to clarify, this is in reference to sockets specifically. Foot orthotics and MJF do not pose this threat. AFO designs and MJF are much less likely to fail in the same way because they remain open on the instep in almost all of their designs, which is a saving grace. We are specifically talking about sockets, BK sockets, sockets and MJF, who are fully engulfed cavities of geometry. Regardless, there are MJF sockets out there, and there are certainly examples of MJF sockets successfully deployed. I'm not trying to say that nylon PA12 cannot be a viable choice. What I'm saying is that the variables leading to inferior parts are wide-ranging and unregulated for O&P right now, and the consequences of a failure resulting from these variables is simply too high to accept. Without some serious understanding or some serious control over your own machine and running your own machine in an O&P setting. In the ONP Digital Designer Academy, we discuss approaching 3D vendors outside of ONP and how to quote a job of your own for your own 3D design. In order to help you mitigate some of the risks, there are things you can ask to be included in your build, like how the device is oriented, how many other parts are printed alongside it, how much fresh material to use instead of recycled material, how long should the part cool down, how should it be handled, dyeing colors can be factored in, and even setting up profiles that MJF part makers can instigate when they go to make your part. The problem there is that if you're not running your own machine, the resulting cost increase of requesting these optimal print conditions for your parts can often double the cost and increase the lead time just to get the part back, essentially making all of this effort for your patients untenable anyway. So practitioners in the field who are looking to get into 3D printed sockets are in a tough place. On one hand, the, the allure is great, but you can't blindly trust others to print for you. And you have to be prepared to pay much more than advertised to mitigate that concern. Or you buy your own 3D printer and pioneer all of your safeguards in-house yourself. Luckily for those of you undeterred by either of these, um, there are some vendors and options that you can approach for MJF printing today who do understand o &P needs for MJF printing integrity and who will take your concerns seriously. Advanced 3D with East Point O&P is a great example of a company who is all in-house 
designing and printing highly advanced devices with all of the practitioner experience needed to ensure a high quality product. For anyone looking to get into MJF parts, you can request parts with them through their website. Tilgis is another orthotic and prosthetic company who has advanced capabilities in 3D printing and who know how to mitigate your needs as practitioners when applying MJF printing. Finally, up in Canada, Boundless Biomechanical Bracing in Toronto also has advanced in-house capabilities and experiences in MJF printing to help practitioners in need. 3D printing prosthetic sockets in MJF is very near in the future, but with the risks involved, and with many people still getting into the field as beginners, there should be some ample warning around blindly getting into MJF printing without first knowing your risks. There is a need for an entry-level solution with much more forgiving mechanics for the burgeoning new field of enthusiastic practitioners who are learning 3D printing. This has become one of the main focus points for ONP Digital Designer, and stay tuned for more updates on a new solution in this regard that will allow beginners and 3D designers across any clinic, experience, or size to be able to print and fit definitive devices safely without the stress of the substantial risks found in MJF printing. Subscribe to our channel, stay up to date on the latest design tips, and purchase our accredited courses on digital design training for ONP professionals. Tune in next time on an update on this subject.